Whatever. All right, so I began thinking about my speech at the beginning of the week. Um, just trying to get a topic. Friday comes around, I get my topic. But you know, it's Friday night. I want to go hang out, have fun with my friends. It's my friend's birthday, so we all go out. So I don't get to my speech that day. <laughs> Saturday comes around, my brother's in town, so we all go to lunch, family gathering. But then I have to work after, and I have to close, so I'm there all night. So, yet again, no time for my speech. <laughs> Sunday's coming around. Boom. One day left to the speech. I have to work in the morning now, so I get off. It's 4 o'clock. Sit down at my, my, my laptop. Pull up the Word document. Cursor's blinking. Can't think of anything to write about. So then, then I just get hungry. I'm going to write my speech. I'm going to get some hummus. So I get that, get back on the computer, I'm on YouTube, still not doing my speech. <laughs> and then, just like that, it's already like 11 o'clock. And yeah, thank you. Just kidding. My speech isn't over yet. <laughs> but today I would like to illustrate. <laughs> today I would like to illustrate how people procrastinate and when they procrastinate. Um, what I said in the intro kind of fabricated most of it, but I was actually working on my speech while I was doing most of those activities. And when I planned it out. And um, according to dictionary.com, procrastination is to put off or delay something requiring immediate attention. And actually, Dr. Pierce Steele came up with an equation for procrastination. It <coughs> is the desirability of a task equals the expectancy of a person has of exceeding the task, succeeding at the task, my apologies. Um, times the value the task has divided by its immediacy or availability multiplied by the sensitivity to the delay of the person. And we'll start off with work here. Work. Everybody loves to go to work, right? <laughs> Wrong. Nobody loves to go to work. I mean, unless you work, uh, unless you're like an athlete. That's kind of fun. But... <laughs> I mean, word procrastination is almost inevitable. Um, for example, I work at a restaurant, so I mean, I procrastinate sometimes. Sometimes I don't want to deal with the guests just because, I don't know, I get like a drink order and then I'll get sat two more tables while I'm still talking to this one table and then I'm just like, I want to get this table handled with, you know, they have, they ordered a lot. I'm going to get a lot of money off this table. <laughs> I don't want to focus on them right now. So then I come back and now I have two tables. So I got two times the work that I just had for that one table. And now my coworkers are going to be kind of upset that I procrastinated. And they're like, he does this all the time. And I have to help him out. So it kind of like really defeats the teamwork purpose. No one really wants to work as a team. And it just kind of, uh, I'm just kind of averting from the task at hand, um, and I'm not really asserting myself to doing the right thing. Um, but you can actually reduce procrastination in the work environment. All you have to do is, you know, tackle the job right away, you'll feel less stressed out, your self-confidence will go up, and you will actually do work right. You, you, the ability to do better work will increase. Because if I'm serving those tables, they're going to have poor service for at least 10 minutes unless I tackle that right then. The service goes up. Later, I won't have to be so overwhelmed. I won't forget small things. And um, another procrastination type, actually, this one really affects most of the people. I'm talking about you guys. Affected me. It's medical procrastination. Um, a true story about me, though. Um, I actually had a hernia, and I'm on 
the tennis team, but I've got it from playing soccer. But I actually wanted to put it off and kind of procrastinate it until after the tennis season. Doing so, I harmed myself and ended up having a double hernia because the body balances itself. So if I would have really like just you know not sacrificed the team's sake, because we actually didn't end up even end up doing that well. But if I would have, <laughs> I'm not saying it was all my fault, but if, we, if I would have really taken care of that, my health would have been better as a person, and the team may have not have suffered. So it was really on on you, because the more you procrastinate, the more it weakens your immune system. Say so you get less sleep, you'll be constantly thinking about things. But um, um, one of my favorite poets, Ralph Waldo Emerson, once said, "Do the thing we fear, and death of fear is certain." This applies a lot to student procrastination. Um, Seventy percent of college students affiliate themselves as procrastinators, and uh, a few of those things that we as college students think of procrastination as is fear of failure, one of the major things. Also fear of success. Um, Dr. Diane Tice and Dr. Boslodsky, they affiliate themselves with a feel good now. A lot of the students, a lot of the young people want to feel good now. Say, you know, you are on the computer typing up your report and you want to go to YouTube and just laugh it up for a few minutes. Enjoy yourself. You don't want to do this now. You want to, you know, you want to have fun now. Um, also, with procrastination, um, I used to procrastinate a lot as a student. I would wait until maybe like 12 o'clock, and then I'm like, okay, I'm going to do this now. But, and then I was like, mm, I'm actually really tired. So I would wake up at like 6 in the morning and try and write my report, and I would get it done. So it really wasn't helping me. I would get bees on those, you know. I would, kind of cheating myself a little bit, but I mean, I, I was passing, so I kept doing it. But I was losing sleep, hence weakening my immune system. And um, Psychology Today says a lot of students show increases in colds and flus that do procrastinate. Also, a link of higher alcohol consumption is also shown with procrastinators because they do not have that ability to self-regulate themselves. <clears throat> um, Dr. Ferrari also says, um, to tell a chronic procrastinator just to do it is like telling a clinically depressed person to cheer up. It's not that simple. But there are a few ways to change. Um, Psychology Today also says uh, strategic planning is one of the major ways. You gotta make a list, kind of go through it, put the intentions down that you want to see out of what you're gonna do, because you have realistic goals that you're trying to create. And you can also break it down, you know, work 30 minutes, take a little break, get that snack, go back 30 minutes, maybe watch one video on YouTube. You have to regulate yourself. <laughs> And there's also meaning behind it. You have to put meaning in to what you're doing because you're not just coming to school for no reason. You're coming to school for a goal, to get that job, to graduate. I mean, if we're in college, we're not in high school, we're not being forced to go to school. And then also reward yourself after what you're doing. You know, I reward myself with playing a, a game of FIFA. I love FIFA. So after I'm done, I will play one game. Also, take the time needed for the task and multiply that by about... 10. Yes, 10. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, and uh, just to kind of sum up the ideas, taking care of the task right away can really prove to be less stressful on you. Um, you'll feel more free as a person. You know, If you're in conversation with someone, you won't be thinking in the back of your mind, I have to do that speech. You'd be more focused on the conversation, more in the moment with everybody. You'd be able to have fun, and you'll be able to do better work. You know, you don't want to cheat yourself because cheating yourself is just cheating yourself. And if you're not even listening to me on this topic, please listen to Ben Franklin, who says, "You may delay, 